Good afternoon. <clears throat> My name is Edward King, and this is the House of Prayer. It is April the 7th, 2014. And I realize it's been some time since I've actually uh, produced a, a House of Prayer presentation. Um, I've had a number of events take place in my life over the past few months here and uh, for most of the year in fact um, I've had some surgery done uh, a backfired gallbladder operation that I'm still wondering you know if I shouldn't have just been faithful and just enough you know let God heal it because uh, the, uh, the procedure didn't go well and uh, there were a number of complications. So I've been humbled. I'll say that much. I'm here right now um, with the deer in a little town in northern Alberta called Fox Creek. Um, population, I think, around 2,000 and something. Um, surrounded by forest, hills, streams, rivers, lakes. Not too shabby. I like it. Um, oh, look over there. I'll go get it. One moment here. I, I just discovered something lying in the snow. Uh, this is a deer trail. And, uh, that runs through here. I think I'll take this home to show to my children. Some young buck shed an antler here. They shed their antlers, right? Grow them back in the fall for rut season. Oh, he looks like he broke a point off here on the edge, so maybe he was in some conflict. Yeah, I'll throw that up on my nap knapsack there to take home and show my daughter. My daughters all love animals. They love God's creation. They, they love nature, you know. And uh, that's good because uh, so do I. And uh, I've always had an affinity for that sort of thing. So, yes, um, I'll take that back to show them. They'll be delighted. Um, I didn't really have anything particular in mind. I, I mean, I had a lot of ideas about, you know, what I'd say in the next House of Prayer presentation, but um, to be honest, I, I, I don't really know what my subject material should be. I do know that last month, uh, when I was in the hospital for well over two weeks, uh, some really incredible things took place. One of my, uh, you know, we share rooms there in the hospital. Uh, roommate, I guess might be the word. Um, roommates there in the hospital uh, was an 86-year-old man. And uh, he was obviously a believer in the Word of God, the Holy Bible. And um, we shared some words and we shared the word and uh, we began praying for people in the hospital and we saw the power of God working in that hospital I mean people were in there one night and the next day they were gone we prayed for one another and we prayed for others and I have to say it was an incredible testimony. Hospital beds were empty, and nurses got to take a break. And uh, it was wonderful. And, you know, one of the nurses was a believer, too. She knew what was up. And uh, you could tell. She was delighted that this was happening. I get choked up every time I start talking about this, to be honest. The, the mercy of God is a phenomenal thing to see. You know, prayer in action uh, is a phenomenal thing to see. And God is so good. Um, 
He came to my room and shook my hand when it was time for him to leave. And I was honored to shake the hands of a real elder, 86 years old, to pray with him and to witness. You know, I, I was wondering, God, why, why, you know, why am I here? Why do I have to stay here so long? And I mean, the answer came to my heart before I was even finished praying, before I even, you know, finished getting it out. My complaint, my petition that I was going to put before God. If you weren't here, who would be praying for these? My, my. You know, a humbling indeed. If you weren't here, who would be praying for these? I saw a young man, not even 20, you know, stream pain. Yeah, I was a little serious, you know, I, I won't get into the details. I watched him leave. Saw another gentleman so troubled by the concerns of this world and his family. I, I you know, I, I had the opportunity to give him a little testimony before he left. Told him I was gonna pray for him. Watched him leave. In fact, I had personally five roommates. And the one that stayed the longest was the 86-year-old man. And I think the reason God kept him there with me is because I think the Lord saw that a miracle could be wrought with the two of us praying together. And so he kind of kept him there a little longer for about a week. And... Uh, it was incredible to witness, that's all I can say. It was an incredible thing to see the beds emptying in that section at the hospital. God is good. God is merciful. God is compassionate. He heals the sick. He heals the lame. He sets the captives free. He is such a good God. If you're in some sort of calamity, some sort of trouble, all I can say is set your heart before God. Lift up your petition to God. Cry out to God. He himself said, he makes his abode with the broken and contrite heart of spirit. Shed those tears. Yes, by all means. Okay? Just be sure it's real. God judges the heart. He sees it. He sees when you're being real. Tears can be very real, friend. Now, I know there are things you may wonder, well, why isn't he doing this? Why isn't he answering my prayer? Why? Because he knows best, okay? Don't ask amiss, all right? Make your heart sincere before God, but definitely do it. Lift up your voice and pray, because God is good. And if your heart is sincere, he will hear your prayer. And he will do for you what is best for you. Believe. Believe the truth. God is the realest thing that you can ever hope to experience in your whole life. There is nothing more real than God. All the rest of this is consequential. Okay? He spoke all of creation into existence. He is the source of reality. There is nothing more real than God. If you can keep that in your mind, if you can retain that fact in your knowledge, 
you'll be so much better off when you finally start to pray. Oh, there's my little squirrel friend. Yeah, he's talking to me. He's probably wondering, well, where have you been? I haven't seen you in a while. You know, my little squirrel friend comes to visit me here. Anyway, I hope you get something from this. Because what I saw in the city was a real eye-opener. A very humbling experience indeed. And I was honored to shake the hand of that 86-year-old believer in Christ. <sighs> Shortly after that, it was my turn to leave. I had uh, two uh, bags, drainage bags, uh, hanging from me. Plastic tubes that came out of me. God was keeping me in the city. You know, they told me, don't go too far now. We need you back for ultrasounds, blood work, you know. I was an outpatient. My father had run into some legal problems. There were certain individuals that wanted him removed from his home so that they could sell his house and his personal possessions. Divide the spoils. Now my father has Parkinson's. But that doesn't mean he can't cook for himself. Does not mean that he can't wash himself. Does not mean that he cannot go shopping. Does not mean that he can't even pay his own bills because he does all of that. But certain speculators who will remain nameless, took it upon themselves to uproot his life. I needn't question why I was being kept where I was. He came to me with his concerns, and I started praying. And I started talking to some of these people. And I got a bigger 